Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Claire Ackers here coming to you live from Sunnybank Mills in Farsley. How are you today? It is just gone half past eight on Thursday morning. Uh, the sun is shining out there, hence me having to shut the blinds. And I hope you are really, really well. Uh, you may notice, if you are a regular viewer, that I have a, had a little switch around of the office. Well, I haven't. My husband has because it involved a bit too much heavy lifting for me. But uh, let me know. Let me know what you think of this new setup. I think it's, well, you can see the, the kitchen area. So that means I'll need to keep on top of the washing up. Um, but I quite like it. It gives you um, a good idea and scope of the office. And of course, you can still see the shed quarters in the background as well. So let me know what you think. If you're watching me live, please do say hello in the comments. Let me know how you are today. And if you are catching up a little bit later, please say hello with hashtag replay. Today's topic, how do you know if you are successful yet? This is a big topic, right? Do you feel successful as an entrepreneur? Are you achieving what you set out to achieve? How can you, how do you, measure your success. And if you feel successful now, if you feel successful already, are you done? Or are you plateauing a little bit? And are you itching? Are you ready to go to another level? We're talking about some big questions in today's conversation. Big questions, but really, really important ones. And so many of us, we set off on this journey, on this adventure that is entrepreneurship. And we are so busy doing the do. We are so busy spinning all the plates um, that we forget to look up and just check that we are heading in the right direction and that we are enjoying it as well, right? That it is delivering what we want it to deliver. Or we achieve what most people, what a lot of people would deem to be really successful. Um, and we look around and it just feels hollow. You know, it doesn't feel right for us. Or we set an ambitious target, a really big goal, and we go out there and we give it everything and we smash it, and yet we feel numb. It doesn't feel like we expected it to feel. Today is all about reconnecting or maybe connecting in the first place, with what success means to you. And I promise that you are going to feel excited and empowered as a result of today's conversation. So if you're ready, let's go. If you are new to my world, welcome. I'm Claire Rackers. I'm an authenticity coach. I help female entrepreneurs to get the fire back in their belly for their business, meaning more money, more freedom, um, and not just settling or surviving. Okay, so I'm going to start with the story of my first business. So I've been in business nine years this month, which I'm deeming successful. Um, but this coaching business is my second business. So my first business was a technology recruitment business. And it looked awesome on paper. I had that business for five years. My accountant was really happy with me, you know, kind of celebrating um, all the all the paperwork, all the all the finances. Um, I had a team of seven, so I'd, I'd I'd grown it to a decent size. I was doing all the things. Um, I had amazing clients. You know, the clients were just a joy to work with. Really, really lovely people. Um, I knew I was adding um, value to their businesses from the work that I was doing. And I was being invited on the BBC, uh, on the BBC um, uh, business, uh, business Breakfast News, Think Money, BBC Five Live, all those kind of really credible platforms as a careers expert. So I had that recognition. And on paper, it looked awesome. It looked really, really strong. But I was miserable absolutely miserable. I had that Sunday night feeling, you know, where you're dreading going to work because you just don't know if you can bring the energy. Um, 
I was faking it. I was kind of mustering enthusiasm to the team. Woohoo, let's go. But I was just, it wasn't real. I wasn't in integrity with who I was because I just didn't love what I was doing. And it was only when I came back to work when my youngest daughter, who is now almost five, um, when she was two weeks old, I came back to work when she was two weeks old because the business was not in a shape for me to take a proper maternity leave. And you know what? At the time, I kidded myself that I was displaying um, flexible working. I was displaying that I was living the dream in that I could bring my baby to the office. And I remember client calls on this hand, breastfeeding here, and feeling like I was having it all, but I was absolutely kidding myself. It was not success. It was, it was just like I was, I describe it as I was in a golden cage and I'd built this golden cage and I just couldn't see a way out. And all that continued until I had this epiphany. I was up walking on the moors, um, doing my best at Heathcliff, you know, in Wuthering Heights, um, my best Kathy um, in, in, in Wuthering Heights, doing my best Kate Bush. And I just had this epiphany that this was not my life. I could not do this anymore. Um, I had to just call a halt to everything and go and pursue my absolute dream. And I did. That was my line in the sand. I shut the recruitment business down and I went quiet for a little bit, you know, kind of slowed down to speed up. And I created the business that I have today. And sometimes it might be a bit of a roller coaster. It might not look as great on paper as that, that recruitment business did. But I am living life full of joy. I've got a 100% authentic and aligned business that just feels awesome. And I skip into work every day and my belly is full of fire and it just feels amazing. So when I talk about living your version of success, I really, really do put my money where my mouth is with this stuff. And I see the difference that growing a successful business, your version of success, it makes in my life and it makes in my client's life as well. Now, growing something, growing the wrong business, this is not the first time somebody else's version of success has happened to me. You can sort of see the golden breadcrumbs, you can see the golden threads tracing through. Really good example of this is my first job in recruitment. So I came out of doing a master's, right? I did an MPhil in modern history, um, really academic, really research-based. And I was, um, I was writing up my thesis whilst being a waitress in a cocktail bar in Leeds. And a guy came in, an old barman, and he came in this really sharp suit. And I was like, wow, Chris, where'd you get the suit from? And he said, hey, I've got a job in recruitment. Why don't you come and join me? And I thought, mm, all right then. Because I didn't have a career lined up at the end of my master's. And, you know, that was that was 15 years of my life working in recruitment. Um, and again, on paper, I did really, really well in that recruitment job. So in my first couple of years as a fresh graduate, um, I set records. I set records for the most revenue billed in a month and the most deals done in a month. I can't even remember now. It's so long ago. But everyone around me was like, woo, go Claire. That's amazing. And I was just like, okay, fine, whatever. And I was making a lot of money. You know, I went out and bought my first car for cash. And my dad was just like, what kind of job are you doing? You know, you just didn't get it. That kind of money didn't compute. And that brought up a lot of money stories for me, which is a topic for a different time. Um, but that much measure of success, that money, it didn't mean anything to me. And some of the things I had to do to get that money, they just didn't sit right with my values and my integrity. Now, that environment was a particular beast. You know, it was a kind of environment, it was old school recruitment. The MD used to walk around smoking fags in the office, dropping ash all over your desk. You had to stand up to make phone calls. You couldn't sit down till you'd, till you'd arrange an interview. It was ridiculous. If you've ever worked in recruitment, you probably, and you're a certain age, you probably recognize what I mean by that. And it was weird. And it taught me a lot of interesting things about sales and about myself. But this is the point for today. Um, it was 
on paper it looked awesome, but it was so far away from me and my version of success that I got ill. I burnt out. I was being sick with stress. Now, I just want you to think about that for a minute because we're so often we sleepwalk into these situations and we don't know how to get out. So this is a bit of a cautionary tale of what can happen if you don't think about what success means to you. Let me tell you the story of a client. So this is um, a, um, a female managing director of a tech business. And she came to me because she was being absolutely hamstrung by her investors. She'd scaled her business to a certain level and then done what every good um, founder is encouraged to do. And I say that with a smile because lots don't, but in a certain sector, that is the path to success. You go out and get investment so you can scale. scale sorry. And this particular uh, MD had gone out, she'd got investment, and the investors, they wanted their pound of flesh. Of course they did. They were investing in the business to get a certain return on their investment. But there was, there was a clash of approaches, of integrity, of values. She was under pressure all day, every day, getting messages. Why haven't you done this yet? When are we hitting this number? What's going wrong? You need to sack this person. You need to do this thing. Your ideas are wrong. She was living in constant conflict with what she deemed to be successful, which was a happy culture with people who wanted to stay there, with giving people time to um, to get up to speed. Um, and her investors were forcing her to jump when they said jump. Um, their version was absolutely the bottom line versus what she knew to be right. Another example, uh, another client who uh, is a CEO of a technology business. I work with a lot of technology founders. Um, now, she was the CEO in name, which looked great on paper, on a letterhead, on her email signature, and on LinkedIn. She got invites because she was CEO of a tech business, um, but she was leader in name only. When we had a conversation, it turned out that her version of success was having the freedom to do what she thought was right in the business. Um, but every single decision that she made, every call that she made, every product line that she pursued, every hiring decision she made or um, unmade um, was undermined by her founder who couldn't help but stick their nose in at every decision every day. It was just kind of there, not leaving her to it, not giving her freedom to stretch her legs on what she thought was right. And she, she had to eat humble pie all the time. Um, and it made her sick, it absolutely made her sick because she was being undermined in front of the team. She was doubting herself. Um, and in the end, she ended up not taking the big risks that she needed to in order to be successful because she felt so undermined um, and unable to pursue success in what she felt was right. Another client, um, now this particular lady, um, founder of a marketing um, consultancy, she was just about surviving. She was keeping going. She wasn't a rookie to business, but she was just about surviving. She was stuck in the weeds. She was spinning all the plates. She was spending her time doing low value tasks. For her, she had so lost sight of what success meant to her and why she had launched her business in the first place, um, which for her was she was in business to see her kids in daylight um, and to disrupt her industry. And she'd, she'd drifted so much in just focusing on surviving that she had forgotten what success meant to her. One more, one more example. I was working with a managing director of a, a SaaS company, a technology company, um, who her and a co-founder had decided it was time to step up to be CEO rather than managing director. Now, we were in this very room and we sat down and we looked at each other and we thought, um, what's a CEO? And both of us, we didn't have a clue what a CEO actually did. So what we did is we got on this very floor behind me, we sat on the floor, and we got a stack of post-its. Have I got any post-its to hand? 
And we wrote down on these post-its, what is a CEO? And we literally plucked out of thin air and from our best guesses and from her version of success, what a CEO could be. And we made that into her job description. Now that is some powerful intentionality, right? Uh, That was years ago that we sat down and did that exercise. And that woman is a goddamn millionaire now. So this stuff is important. And if you have recognized yourself in any of these, I want you to hear this. And it's that you have got an opportunity right here, right now, line in the sand to redefine, to reconnect, to connect in the first place with what your own personal definition of success is. I'm going to invite you to take some time today, if possible. I'd like you to take yourself off for a coffee somewhere where you're not going to be interrupted. I'd like you to disappear for a walk for half an hour. Just give yourself some thinking time where you're not going to get distracted and pulled back into the weeds. Um, You can write this down. You can um, walk it out and just think about this. You can voice note it to yourself. And don't forget, um, you can go back and watch and listen to this section again with some questions I'm going to share with you and do it slowly. I don't care how you do it, but please, 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 if any of these stories have resonated with you today, if you would like to feel more successful, this is an opportunity for you. Here's some questions for you. Question one to consider, what does success mean to me? What does success mean to me? Question two, how do I define success? If I had to explain it to a four-year-old, how would I define success? Question three, what values, you know I love a value, what values are involved in my definition, definition of success? In order to achieve that, what do I need to stand for? Who do I need to be? Question four, what's my vision for success? Way, way out in the future. Big picture, macro stuff. Where am I headed? What's my definition? What's my vision for success in the future? How will I measure it? How will I know when I've got there? And how do I want it to feel? That's a really important one. How do I want it to feel? What question number five? Question number five, where am I compromising on this vision now? Where am I compromising on this vision now? Question six, whose definition of success am I currently working to? This one can be quite confronting. I've told you lots of examples of it today, but it's important. Whose definition of success am I currently working to? And then question seven, What's one action that I can do today, lying in the sand, to move one step closer towards my version of success? Just one baby step. Something that I can put into action immediately today to take, move one baby step closer towards my version of success. Now, if you're getting a little bit excited, a little bit uh, goosebumps and tingles, about recalibrating your version of success, I've got a little invitation for you today. I'm bringing together a small group of female entrepreneurs uh, for a brainstorming session this coming Friday afternoon. So Friday, depending on when you're listening and watching this, uh, it's Friday the 12th of July at 1pm. Uh, And we're going to be brainstorming on the best ways to build that success, um, to build that wealth and to build that freedom in your business whilst remaining an authentic leader. That's fundamental, whilst remaining an authentic leader. There is no charge for this session, but there is a strict criteria on who it is for. It's for women in business for female founders, for female entrepreneurs who have big dreams for their business, but who are stuck in the weeds um, on the financial roller coaster, and maybe as a result of today, 
could do with tweaking their version of success, who know that they need upgraded strategies and a confident plan in order to reach that next level. You've got to be already making good money in your business um, and also looking for more efficient um, and easeful ways to build revenue and to build impact. So if you would like to be considered for this free session, um, please drop a comment with the word brainstorm um, or you can send me a private message as well if you don't want to do it publicly and I will be in touch with the next steps. That's it from me today. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you very soon.